The preacher came to call the other day. He said, at my age, I should be thinking about the hereafter. I told him, oh, I do, all the time. No matter where I am, in the parlor, upstairs, in the kitchen, or down in the basement, I ask myself, what am I here after? <laughs> Can anybody else relate? <laughs> you know, in unity, that's the kind of hereafter we like. What am I here after? What am I here after? <laughs> It's true, the mind is a terrible thing to waste or lose or to think too little of. The Buddhists say, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's mind, there are few. We all know the valuable of having a sharp mind, a clear mind, an open mind, a receptive mind a reachable and teachable mind. I love the bumper sticker that says, a mind is like a parachute. It only opens if it will open. It only works if it will open. <laughs> I forgot it. <laughs> you just can't script that stuff. <laughs> So we know that. We know the valuable of having a clear mind and an open mind and all of these things. And yet, I think sometimes, even in unity and new thought, where we certainly place a lot of emphasis on science and thought and consciousness and awareness and the presence, realizing that God is a presence and not a personality, but is a very life presence, our life, sometimes we still perhaps are not well equipped when it comes to knowing how to care for the mind and realizing that our mind is one of our greatest resources, maybe the greatest resource. It's also a practice. Our mind can lead us into a spiritual practice. In Romans it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect the will of God. Be not conformed to this world means do not allow yourself to be molded by what you see in this world, to be conformed and constricted to what you see right here. But be transformed by the renewing what I noticed about this this time that I've never really paid that much attention to before is renewing I-N-G, the ongoing renewal of your mind. It's not a one-time thing or something that we get there and we finally have a renewed mind. Have any of you ever thought that you might reach a point of enlightenment and then you could take a vacation and that would be it? <laughs> yeah, well, it just doesn't work quite that way. And that we may prove, prove basically means to demonstrate, that we may demonstrate, prove it to ourselves in our own life, what is the will of God. A lot of people ask, what is the will of God? It's very simple. The will of God is the nature of God. So when we're trying to prove the will of God, we're trying to demonstrate the nature, the presence of God, the possibility of God in our own life. That's what we're here for. And so that happens through the renewing of our mind. Science tells us that the mind and the brain are not really the same thing. Have you ever thought about that? That your mind is so much more than your brain. One person said, the brain is like an engine while the mind is like the driver and the director of the car. Your mind is your connection to headquarters, to source, to the center of operations. Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, really did a lot of research on the mind and the scripture of what it meant to renew your mind. And he said, mind is the common meeting ground between God and humans. It is, it, is the most, it is through the most highly accelerated mind action, such as prayer, that we make conscious union with God. Emily Cady in the classic Unity book, Lessons in Truth, said, there is only one mind. Jim, would you give me this slide? There's only one mind. I like to think about it like this. There is God, G-O-D, the grand overall designer. The grand overall designer, call it whatever you will. But if there's that one power, that one presence, that one light, that one sun, 
We can extinguish this light, but have we extinguished fire? No. Any flame is but, a but one representation of fire. The mind of God, if you will, and today we're going to call that the mastermind, not because there's anything new you don't know about. It's simply a way of talking about an aspect of all that we call of God, the grand overall designer. We're going to use the term the mastermind, and I'll tell you more about that, or God mind, to help us understand that an aspect of that which we call of, as God is as if, the, it's as if it is the one source that sources all of us. So when we say there's only one mind, there's only one power, one presence, one source of consciousness, and that each of us are individualized units of consciousness, that your mind is sourced by God mind. So would you turn to your neighbor and say, you got a nice God mind. <laughs> <laughs> The mind grows with what it feeds upon. The mind grows with what it exposes itself to and it feeds upon. It's that simple. And so we want to look at what are the characteristics of God. The first thing I want us to consider is this. God wants to blow your mind. God mind wants to blow your mind. Say that with me. God wants to blow my mind. God wants to blow my mind. Just when I learn the answers, they change the questions. That's life. Just when we learn something, just when we master, just when we get comfortable, just when we think we've got it figured out and the family's working right, the kids grow up. The job ends. The health changes. This happens and that happens. Just when we learn the answers, the question changes. Well, that's the nature of the universe. In the 1920s, Edward Hubble, Edwin Hubble, started working with a type of telescope. He wanted to be able to measure the Earth in relationship to the universe. Well, that led to the discovery of the Hubble telescope. Today, the Hubble telescope travels around the Earth every 97 minutes. The Hubble telescope makes its way across the United States in less than 10 minutes. Isn't that mind-boggling? And what they discovered and continue to discover is that the universe is expanding at an unimaginable rate. That ever since it's been watched and as we continue to watch it, the universe is expanding right now. You ever stop and think about the fact that at this very moment, you know, when our astronauts went to the moon and they took that beautiful picture and allowed us to look back at the earth, something shifted in our consciousness. We saw how little we were in the scheme of things. And have you ever thought about it? This very minute, the universe is expanding by leaps and bounds. The earth is this little ball flying through space. You are on it being held in place and yet we sit here as if nothing is moving. Can you wrap your mind around that? No! God intends to blow our mind. John Ruskin said, when we wrap ourselves in a, when we're all wrapped up in ourselves, we make pretty small packages. God is always trying to get us out of our package to blow our mind. Lynn McTaggart is author of her newest book is The Bond. She's written several books on consciousness and she happened to be one of our speakers back in June at Unity's conference. And in the course of conversation, one of the things she said that led her to really start to study consciousness and mind, this mastermind that is God, she said, I noticed myself in deep moments of meditation. And there was always something in me, she said, I'll call it spirit. And I could always notice something that was seeking to express no matter how much I, my ego, my personality, tried to hold it back. She said, it's the same way that I can sit here and hold my breath for a while. There's something inside of me fighting for survival that will force me to take a breath. In other words, I cannot sit here and suffocate myself because one part of my nature demands life. 